Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and thanks to the uh, generous contribution of viewer Matthew, we have a Zip 22 to actually do some shooting with today. You, of course, hopefully, uh, saw the desktop video on this yesterday with its history and its disassembly, and now we're actually going to try and make it work. So, I want to reiterate, we touched on this yesterday, this is a particularly, potentially hazardous firearm to use because these are the cocking handles out here at the very front, where you basically have to stick your finger in front of the muzzle in order to charge this thing. So this one is actually fitted with a special, there we go, special charging device, which I'm going to go ahead and use as much as I can. We have a Ruger uh, 1022, 10 round magazine there. Go ahead and fit that in and then pop that. Now it's loaded and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this left-handed, not just because I'm left-handed, but because this is actually safer to shoot left-handed because you're less likely to get your hand in the way of the ejection port. Now there is a very slim chance this will actually work, but let's find out. Okay, I can't quite get enough strength on the trigger to fire it. All right, we're gonna go with the middle finger trigger option here. Oh, <laughs> safety was on. All right, back to normal. Well, it ejected and did not fire a second round. All right, what we have there is a pretty basic failure to feed. You see inside there? I should be able to fix that by just bringing back the bolt handle. Nope. All right, that's kind of problematic. And pull the magazine. And then being very careful with, there we go. There is no extractor on this. So if you have something like that, a partial failure to feed, there's no, you can't just like pull the empty case out. You, because there's no extractor to do that. You have to fiddle with it until you get it all the way into the chamber. So, all right, let's try this again. This, by the way, is uh, is a Gila Hyper Velocity 22. I have three different brands of ammo to try today. We're gonna start with that one. I suspect none of them will actually work, but here we go. Okay, now the striker safety lock has bitten me here because as we discussed yesterday, if you only cock it halfway, then it doesn't fully, uh, it, it locks the striker as some sort of goofy safety mechanism. There we go. That should be fully cocked now. There we go, we did extract and appear to have fed. Hey, two rounds in a row. I think that is the most successful string of firing of a Zip 22 that I have ever seen in my life. I watched a bunch of the other videos that people have put up on these things just to get a feel for what I should expect. None of them prepared me for it actually firing. So maybe the Aguila ammo is the trick. I know it kind of wants high velocity stuff. Um, next up, we have a 15 round Ruger factory magazine. Let's see if this can actually work. Once again, it'll be very... Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Didn't bring the thing far enough back to actually feed. There we go. Let's try that. Interesting. It has locked open somehow. It's not supposed to be able to do that, but it appears to have locked open on a loaded magazine. Uh, 
and it jammed that bullet back into its case. We're going to get rid of that one. Let's try this again here. Nope, didn't. So these recoil springs are actually really stiff to use, and especially when you're trying to be careful not to put your finger in front of the muzzle, um, they're they're difficult. I what I did there is didn't quite pull it far enough back to actually fully chamber a cartridge. There we go. Now it is. That didn't feel like it reset. Nope, that has locked open again. In fact, it looks like what's happening is it is jamming cartridges into the front of the magazine. Yeah, so that's actually not a problem I can blame on the zip. That's a problem with this magazine, I think, in conjunction with these this ammunition. It's when the bolt hits the back of the case, it's jamming it forward and the magazine's not lifting it up properly to feed. So um, let's go ahead and go back to the 10 round magazine. Just for kicks, I'm gonna try a different brand of ammunition. All right, that last ammo was a Gila 30 grain. This is uh, American Eagle Red Box 40 grain projectiles. I'm gonna use that uh, charging thing here again. There we go, we should be good to go. Go ahead and try it right hand. You know what, no, we're gonna, we're gonna stick with left hand. There's a failure to properly feed. The zip here has no actual feed ramp, uh, and so it's relatively easy to get this sort of thing. I'll be honest though, this is performing far better than I had expected at all. Now, to get this clear, I'm gonna hold the bolt back. There we go. Nope, didn't quite get the bolt far enough back to actually get around in there. Let's try that. That one, not entirely sure what that problem is because offhand, I can't tell if that's a round that's partially chambered or partially extracted. Let's, see, let's start by taking the magazine out. And then, oh, that's just locked up solid in there. Odd. All right, I'm not sure what has happened there, but if we look in there, see if you can see that, the, uh, the bolt is not actually touching the cartridge case. Something is jammed up. That, okay, so that case has fired because there's an indent on the, the back face. So we should be in a safe condition, but um, it's a little hard to manipulate this thing because there's no way to get into. How do I fix that? Yeah, I have no idea what's happened there. Um, I think we're gonna have to call the video here because this, it doesn't appear to be broken, but it's certainly not working. So um, overall, I'm actually fairly impressed by how well this did function. I was expecting every other round misfires, and instead we only got a couple misfires per magazine. So for a zip, that's actually a remarkably good performance. Uh, handling on this is as bad as you would expect from dry handling it. Um, it is actually an uncomfortable gun to fire despite the fact that it's just a 22 rim fire. Uh, this is truly one of the worst guns that I've ever actually laid hands on, which is an impressive achievement. So uh, don't buy one of these unless you want it as you know part of your menagerie of 
terrible guns, which, hey, I get it. That's a cool collection to have. And in that case, go nuts. And by all means, try and find yourself the 22 Magnum single shot conversion as well. Uh, a big thanks to Matt for loaning this one to me. We'll be sending it back to you. I'll hopefully be able to fix it before I send it back to you. Um, but if not, well, haven't really lost anything. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned tomorrow for more cool forgotten weapons. All right, I have this back home now to try and figure out what was going on with it. As you can see, the bolt is about halfway back, maybe two thirds of the way back, and just stuck there. So let's start by taking the top plate off. There we go. And then. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the back cover off, and I think the step that we need to do here is to take out the spring tension on those two main guide rods. Unfortunately, these problems... see anything really obvious there. Uh, unfortunately, these problems precluded me from being able to get any high-speed footage because we were going to do that as soon as we were done getting the regular footage. And then, of course, the gun seized up. So previously when I did this, the guide rods walked forward under spring tension. This time, the screw is actually coming back out. Yep, there it goes. All right, so there's that one. Okay, screws all the way out, but that rod does not want to come free. Alright, let's bring out the punch set. I do happen to have a solid plastic punch. Put the bolt forward a little bit. thing wiggles, but it does not want to come out. The bolt looks like it's in its proper path and track. Well, if I can push it all the way forward, <coughs> then I can get the striker spring out, and that should help things. go. Bolts all the way forward now. That still doesn't want to come out, but striker. Get those bits out. We can take the striker out. Now we've got just the bolt in there. All right, I kept going. I fully field stripped the thing, and now, now it actually works. Uh, I never saw a piece of brass or lead or dirt or anything fall out of it. I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, stripping these rods and springs out, tapping the the bolt out. When I went to put it back together, everything just fit nicely. So, I don't know. Uh, I will still not recommend these for purchase. And I think that 
is finally all we've got on the zip. Thanks for watching.